All right, hello everybody and welcome to our interview slash teaching session today. I've invited my friend Nadia Shah over to my cyber house for a little astro snack and we're going to talk about Pluto retrograde and <laughs> whatever else comes up onto the table today and hopefully you guys will love and enjoy it. Grab your charts. If you don't have a chart, make sure you snag one so you can see where this is happening in your astrology and breathe in how you can work with it and maybe even since the beginning of the year some of the influences you've been feeling begin to shift you with the energy that we're going to talk about. Of course, you can still get signed up for the 65,000 um, subscriber gift. It is the big yellow stamp that is in the community tab, or you can come see me on my website at stormygrace.com. So welcome, Miss Nadia. This is the Cyber House. It has glitter. Well, thank you, Miss Stormy. I feel very welcome in the midst of glitter, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> I love glitter. Yeah, there's really something to it. It just brings it up a notch. I'm like, it's, some people think it's superficial, but I'm like, it's clearly because you don't have any glitter in your life. People who watched me back in the day, like we're talking a while back, because I've been on YouTube for a while now, but back in the day, glitter eyeshadow was my thing. I mean, <laughs> I would rock the glitter eyeshadow, the sequins. I mean, I, I really had a lot of fun with my look. Oh, I'm going back to see it now. <laughs> now I just have to know. Just in general. Yeah, the videos of like 2015, 2014, that's where I'm really rocking a lot of glitter. That's yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. That is brilliant. Well, I'm really glad to have you here. People have been so excited to see us talk about anything, it turns out, <laughs> together, which I always feel like is such a a nice vibration for for you and I, right? That, that people are looking at us on two different planes and saying, hey, these energies I'd like to have together in my life. So that is always a beautiful, beautiful thing. And you've been busy beetle over there writing books and all of this goodness. What have you been up to? Well, I love it. I, I feel like so grateful to have the energy right now to do all these things. And it feels good to be like in my zone, I guess you could say, like enthusiastic and about the things that are coming forward. And, you know, again, people who've watched me for a while, they know that uh, Saturn and Sagittarius was pretty brutal to me, it was quite a, a brutal transit. It was uh, in my natal sixth and um, really like I just, just showing up was a whole lot. And I'm so grateful that I had like my fans who, um, for them, I showed up. For them, I did what I could do and showed up every single week to record my videos and things. But that was uh, a time when I started feeling like, okay, let me just do what I can. And that had to be enough, but it taught me so much. And so now to be on the other side of it, because I do believe that Saturn ends up giving you rewards Mm -hmm. but it tends to be rewards that you've earned. And so during that, that transit of Saturn in my moon sign, so much of it and so much of the lesson was about the value of being at peace with yourself. And that's it. And the value of acceptance, like do your best and surrender the rest. And if my best really was being able to sit in front of my camera once a week, then that was okay. Like that really was okay for that to be enough and so to get to that that point from a person who has you know saturn in the first house to get to that point where i'm like okay you know what nothing matters like being at peace with myself and that's where my work is and everything else i will just surrender it to be at a place now on the other side where it's like yeah i want to do this let's do that so and then it's done you know it's like a really really cool feeling to feel those juices going and the creativity and wow, there's this I could do and to feel the excitement. And so, yes, I feel like uh, I have been uh, very filled with creativity lately. So in the last couple of years, there've been books, there's been the expansion of my work, there's been the superstar space uh, through my website and reaching out and teaching the expansion of Synchronicity University, my school. And it, it's just so wonderful to have people who resonate with what I have to give. Like, it, it just means so much. And I, I'm sure you relate because you have so many people who resonate with what you share. Yeah, 
but it's neat to come, like you said, into the creative flow time because there are those times where it's like the hustle and then the flow, yeah. you know? Yeah, but yeah. Saturn, Saturn is, he gets a bad rap, man, but he really has got some nice things to offer if you can work with him instead of against him. Yeah, totally. is my experience. So if you guys are wanting to check out and you vibe with Nadia today, even if it's your first time meeting Nadia today, because some of you are very new, all of her information will be in the description box down below. And I advise you go check her out. I mean, I, when she's putting up a video, even I'm like, Ooh, what is, what's going on over here? So check it out. There's a lot of valuable information there and it's heart information, which is the thing that I love, right? I love, um, are heady people as well but when there's head heart information that's the stuff i feel like grounds me into the work that we're all trying to get done here so yay for you doing what you're doing and making it through sixth house Whew. thank Whew. you thank you yeah that was something yeah well you come out <laughs> swimmingly so let's talk about pluto retrograde which is going to just be coming up here april 25th so it's the next really nice big retrograde movement we've got coming and then everyone will kind of follow suit as we get into may but pluto starts the game for us so if you're kind of new to astrology when a planet goes retrograde in astrology it is this optic illusion we paint where the planet starts to travel backwards right? And so what it does is a retro, it sends us in, it's re, revise, re-edit, reconnect, um, revisit something. So we usually start to work on something from the inside and it's like it gets us back in order. And so as Pluto's going retrograde, this is an ideal time for us in a very basic way to say, what do I need to, what am I power struggling with here? What is that thing that I know is the truth? And I keep just kind of pushing it down. Right? I don't want to quite acknowledge that yet because it's going to give you the opportunity to have some transformation through it. And we use that word in the metaphysical community quite a bit. So I think sometimes it's like, Ugh, I'm tired of transforming. But this is a literal transformation when it comes to Pluto. You will shed it because it's this kind of the Phoenix energy. It says, I need to shed this so that I can live like this. You know, so during a Pluto retrograde, you likely get to go back to something that you've already been looking at. It's still in the energy of Capricorn. So you're likely looking at something you've been looking at for a couple years. And now you get to make those adjustments, which I think is a really, you know, it's been there. The magic's been there for all of us. So it's like, okay, shed that last piece so you'll actually go do it. <laughs> right? I mean, that's kind of my experience with it. What about you, Nadia? I think that, um, you know, when planets go retrograde, especially, they not only appear to be going backwards, but they are also uh, closer to the earth than they may otherwise be. And so that becomes a symbol for that very energy becoming magnified and intensified. And I think this is a very powerful time to be looking within. I love that you mentioned power struggles, power structures. There's also a sense of uh, looking at your own definition of power. What is authentic power to you? And where is it within that you're ready to transform something more personal? So its energies become intensified, but also in a retrograde that much more uh, deeply relative, deeply personal to us. And I'm reminded of Pluto. You know, I love to connect the planets to the myth. Um, my most recent book, Prayers to the Sky, is basically looking at the origin mythology of these different planets as sacred energy and how we can understand them more fully from that place. And Pluto is God of the underworld. Pluto truly is going to that place very, very deep where there are um, sometimes painful experiences that we don't always want to look at, but transforming them in some way. This idea of turning lead into gold, the alchemical process is very closely aligned uh, with Pluto as well. And I actually am going to be teaching this week a class on numerology. And so it is actually zero that aligns with the planet Pluto, because there's something very powerful about that sense of beginning and beginning again, uh, that Pluto promises, as you said, the Phoenix rising from the ashes, that means coming down to zero, coming to the starting place, and being reborn necessitates that sense of the first breath and beginning again. And I think that with Pluto retrograde, all of us, and especially when a planet is changing directions, 
the energy is that much more pronounced. I think that there can be divine frustration, as I like to call it. I think that's very strong right now. As the sun has been squaring Pluto, we have been feeling divine frustration. But there's also a sense of, of sacred power in the middle of that. And Pluto can grant us such focus, such intensity, which is a source of power as well. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And I feel like because Pluto is one of those planets that, you know, with the personal planets, they're like above the line. So they're pretty visible, pretty close. When things happen, we see them pretty quickly. We feel them pretty quickly. But because Pluto kind of under its subconscious and it's always in a state of being just in the, the undertow of things, it's this subtle energy. And so as it comes into conjunction with Jupiter or we're feeling energy from the sun, I agree even up way before the 25th of April, we've been experiencing this thing that is like, what is that? You know, like the itchy tag, like, what is that? What is that? Something's going on, right? I'm going towards something. Jupiter and Pluto have said, hey, here's where we're going. Here's, here's, here's the truth. We're going to go here, right? But as Pluto is getting through that retrograde, we're going to go, oh, oh, okay. Okay. I'm a little bit tense. I'm maybe even a little bit afraid. Maybe I'm a lot a bit afraid to let go of all of this in order to walk that new truth forward. So that divine frustration is beautiful and really real. You know, I don't know about you, but I woke up the other day and I was like, oh, it's all wrong, but it's all right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I think culturally, you look at what's happening in the world right now, and I think this is something happening for a lot of people, and we're seeing some very public examples of this as well, where people have been on a particular path, they've been doing well, they've been successful, but they're realizing uh, where it is that the path that they're on has felt superficial, and they haven't wanted to acknowledge it. Now, it isn't about the particular role and what you're doing. It's about what expresses your truth. Right. And it is Pluto standing still. And, and really, because Pluto moves so slowly, even as you and I are talking days before the change of direction, Pluto is slowing right down. It is appearing to stand still in the sky. So this retrograde energy is something that we are feeling already because its energies are that much more pronounced and so we're seeing people frustrated yeah. right we're seeing it with the current circumstances with their lives with the path that they've been on with their work um you know right now i, I was watching some statistic that said just about 30 percent of people can actually work from home and with this great pause that we are in as i call the great pause that we are now in the midst of of Pluto being stationary, what a powerful example of that. But also it is in that space that you connect with your truth. Mm -hmm. And your truth is going to lead you in all kinds of directions. Your truth mm -hmm. is going to be something that may not make a lot of sense to a lot of people to the point where we have wanted to maybe push our truth down. Now here it is coming right to the surface for us to look at. And I just have this, this, this vision. And you and I have spoken about this before. I have this vision that we're in the midst of these times right now of the great pause and eventually we'll be on the other side and people are going to be asked to go back to the roles that they've been in and it's just not going to feel right to a lot of people. For right. some people, they'll be okay. They'll be grateful. They will feel a renewed gratitude. They'll be like, oh my God, I never realized how much this actually means to me. But right. there are going to be a whole lot of people out there who are going to be like, wow, this was never... This is not the path for me anymore. Now, where am I? Now, where am I going to be? And I think the inklings of that right now are going to start to show up for people with Pluto stationing retrograde at this time. I do as well, because I think first, as we're traveling through this time and we have that approaching fear of change or fear of, of letting go of what it has been, like kind of that fear of, of death, whether it be the physical death, I'm worried about the pandemic, or I just don't, I don't know where I'm going next. And then we pair this all together with this opportunity for exponential growth. It, it, you will only have that exponential growth in the direction that is your truth. Anything else will continue to kind of vibrate down there where it's like, that's, that's not it. And it's funny because I am a, I, I never wanted to own my own business, nor did I ever want to work from home. 
both of which I've been doing for seven years and love it. Happy as a clam. My husband is learning to work from home and he is like, no. And it is just, and it has revealed so many more things to him. And so really sometimes, you know, from outside looking into someone else's world, I'm like, that's what's happening to me somewhere right? Like I too am shedding some piece of me that is not valid and it can't be anymore or I'll stop growing and then vibrate with frustration, which is, that is soul crushing to live that way for sure. So I feel like this Pluto retrograde is also, um, this whole time is really um, a test and a question of faith as well you know? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's the thing with Pluto, right? Pluto is such a spiritual energy. Um, oh, look, all planets have that spiritual side of them. I mean, up until very recently in human history, these were the first physical indications of the gods. Like literally we as humanity have understood them as the physical embodiments of highly sacred energies that we are connected to in our own personal lives. And with Pluto, it becomes so much about digging deep, about being really honest as to what we are holding, you know, like a well. I've heard the analogy of, of Pluto representing a well where you don't know how deep it is. You know that the water looks still, but there's so much that could be underneath that you just don't know. And it is this opportunity now to delve in, to dive in, in some way. Now, if we're fortunate, if we feel like we've been exposed to the, the support that we need, whether internally or externally, we feel a sense of support in that dive. But there may be people who maybe don't necessarily have that support per se, mm -hmm. but still they're being asked to take that dive. And that can be uncomfortable if you don't realize that that is the sacred journey you're on right now. Yeah, absolutely. Which is, I think the interesting connection I've been making with that is, Saturn has moved into Aquarius. And so when Saturn shows up in a sign, he says, hey, I need you to get serious here. We got to grow up because we've got to come to the next level, right? We're going to level up this particular place. So as Saturn has stepped here into Aquarius and then we're vibrating with some things that have shattered from the beginning of the year. And now we're at this retrograde. It's like, here's my truth. Am I serious about the tribe, about the information, about the friends, about the organizations I'm aligned with? because that's what I'm gonna need to do the next leg of the spiritual journey. And then as Saturn retrogrades back into Capricorn, it gives us confirmation that, yeah, maybe this is not my right tribe. It's scary, but maybe I do belong with these people or this message over here, which I think the universe is kind and works that way. So you get a little, little check and balance, you know, where it's like, yeah, see, doesn't fit. Let's go this way, right? But only if we're gonna, kind of peek at least into the well, which is interesting too, because we get an interaction at and through this Pluto retrograde with both Venus and Mars. So Mars is like, let's make some things happen. Like, I don't even care where that guy's at. He's like, let's make it happen. Let's just do some things. So it's encouragement to put our feet moving into the ground, right? To be in action, realign the truth with our desires. And that I think is helpful to find in the tribe, don't you? Where it's like, you've got to do something. We're going to be uncomfortable if you don't go get some people to help us or you don't get yeah. some new information. <laughs> well, with Saturn restricting our interactions right about now, because Saturn does bring restriction as well and distance, it is Mars and Aquarius that's saying, look, if you want to feel connected, you got to take action. You got to go about it. You got to make it happen. And being creative in that as well, creatively finding ways to make that happen, finding ways to stay interconnected more than we have before to be more determined to do that is part of um, what I think Mars is helping us with now what what I actually find interesting even in the much bigger picture because I'm all about the real big picture I love that about what we do I think about how right now it's Saturn moving through Aquarius and just as Saturn will leave Aquarius in March 2023 Pluto is going to start entering Aquarius. Right. And so I feel like it is this time that in some ways is setting the stage or creating the structures that ultimately is going to allow Pluto in Aquarius 
to really make itself known more fully. But this is a powerful time of seeds, if you will. And the way that, you know, we were saying earlier, only about 30% of people can work online, but how many more people could work more independently, work online? That is something that more people are gonna start exploring as well in order to create structure in their lives because they're realizing that when it is that you can, for example, work online, work independently, how many more options it gives you, how much more security it gives you. And I think with Saturn, it is about seeking that security through these very tools that we've manifested, like, like the internet, like being connected online, like being able to do your work independently. Absolutely. Well, in leaving the Cancer or Capricorn time frame, we've come back to this idea of I want family, whether it's a family I create or it's the family that I have, you know, or the dynamics were historically that families did everything kind of together, but the work got done. And so now the opportunities as well to work more from home, more independently, go to school, schooling online, that's going to just, that's already in bloom you know this will change the family dynamics as well which i also think is interesting i was talking about this earlier with cameron allen with the nodes moving as well and we come to gemini sag i think that there will be generational healing by the pulling in to work from home be from home as well because we've had generations of ideas passed down and passed down and passed down but now i think some of those ideas will get their healing We'll get the wound cleaning they need. We'll get the release. You know, I know many people who are a brown variety who are having these ancestral sheddings that have begun since they've had to come home and teach their own kids or teach their own students. And they're like, wait a minute, we're in a different time. We're in a different world. Some of these fears don't apply anymore. Those were the fears of my ancestors, not of me. I don't want to give those to my children. I don't want to give those to my students. You know, so I think the in the big scheme of things, there's a lot coming up at this time from that pushing in that has happened that will touch everything, touch our communities as a whole. It's powerful, without a doubt. I mean, it, it Aquarius is the energy of the future. Mm -hmm. And what does it mean to step into the future? Collectively, certainly. Who sure. resists that? Who embraces that? Um, and ultimately with Saturn in Aquarius, I feel like it is divine preparation for Pluto in Aquarius, where it really is going to be much more immersive than it is right now. And this is where we get to ask ourselves, what kind of future do we want to step into? And see, the thing with Aquarius that I think a lot of times people forget, as much as it is about the collective and about the tribe, it is also highly individualistic. I'm reminded of um, an essay by Carl Jung called Eon, uh, a book by Carl Jung, where he talked about how people are looking at uh, the age of Aquarius as a time of, you know, unity and we're going to live as one and integration. But it is a sign with a very strong duality, just like the age of Pisces that we are now moving out of. When you look at the glyph of Aquarius, you see two waves, right? You can think of them as waves of, of water, waves of electricity, and they don't touch each other. Mm -hmm. And so as much as it is about the collective, it is also highly individualistic. As much as it is about uh, being connected online and connected to the world, it is also being off grid. Right? So it has that very strong dichotomy to it. So it'll be interesting to see how people embrace that, what side of it, where in their life they're going to embrace one side versus the other. It's going to be very interesting to see what it is that we choose. But right now, I think that a lot of people are getting the glimpse into what answer is going to feel right to them and for them as part of finding that balance. Yeah, I agree. And I think yeah, no, I don't think you were in my group, but we were talking about it on Astrology Hub and just, you know, this year and what does this look like? And my big thing is, it's like, we don't get to sit back and wait for somebody to do it for us. It's yes, it's all, we're all in it together, which is, you know, a strange thing to say, but what's my part in the in it together, right? And so mm -hmm. I feel like that is a 
big deal whenever Saturn is on the table, Mm -hmm. which is what, what are you doing? What is your part in this situation? What is your part in, in this Pluto retrograde time? What is your part in the releasing? Because I would love somebody to come over and cosmically sprinkle some Pluto on me and I just release my fears and move on. But that is like not how it goes in my experience. Yeah, and that would be a great missed opportunity because that's not the point. The point is to truly transcend, to transform. I was thinking earlier about, you know, I, I live in Mexico. I've lived in Mexico for over seven years and I remember very early on sort of having these realizations of, wow, if I had grown up here, how different my life would have been, you know? And, and then I realized, well, then I wouldn't be me. Right. I wouldn't be who I am. You know, if I traded lives with someone else, then I would be a whole different person and maybe who I am, who I have either created myself to be or earned myself to be. This is a good place. You know, this is somebody worth loving and, and respecting. And this is a person on a journey as well. And so that, that sense of Pluto ultimately revealing to us what is really within us very deep and helping us to make sense of it, helping us to transform it so that it becomes a place of power and not just a place of pain. It is in the work that we become who we are. I'm also reminded of, um, of an interview that, uh, that Stephen Colbert did um, where he was talking about some of his early childhood pain. And he said, you know, who would we be without our sorrows? Surely we would not still be ourselves. Now, this is paraphrasing him. And I think he was quoting Tolkien or something. But that meant so much to me to hear that. And it is Pluto that reminds us of this, that we are who we are, all of it because of pain and sorrow, but we're also who we are because of love, right? Because of genuine, authentic, real love at its essence, which can be indicated not just by one way of understanding Pluto, but certainly by a lot of other planets uh, in our chart. And so it is all the planets that comprise us or that reflect us and the composition of us and that includes the pain and that includes the love as well. Mm-hmm. So what we do with it, that matters, isn't it? And Saturn is about doing. Saturn really is about doing. So yeah. how, what are we going to do with this energy? But it's interesting because we are coming up to a Pluto a retrograde and we are seeing the frustration in our lives and for the collective as well. And you can't quite blame people, you know? Right. It, is, it is divine. It is sort of this wise and loving moment that is leading us to this place. But the key really is, and I hope, especially for those of us uh, who may be watching this, who are part of this way of understanding, who understand this language that you and I are speaking, um, for them to not just get caught up in the frustration of uh, the, the surface of the minutia, and instead to dig deeper, to realize this as a once in a lifetime grand opportunity that we are in the midst in. And, you know, it really is once in a lifetime that we are going to see a year like this yeah. and this great pause that we're in. My hope is that as much of us as possible to use it well, to use it well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and we've got, we've got some, some other planetary helpers you know, Venus is over there hanging out in Gemini saying, well, nope, tell me what you need. Speak it. I need you to speak it. I need you to write it. I need you to say what it is that you need. And if you're unsure, you just don't worry because we're going to retrograde together here, friend. And so we will figure out. Oh, it's going to be a doozy. I right? like to say it is ah, I'm like my, my, this is my uh, magical elixir when yeah. I'm working, when I'm doing anything, my, my Coke without without sugar coke zero but um yeah so that's what i'm pouring somebody earlier was saying are you drinking wine i was like <laughs> you're like, I was like it's better it's my magical <laughs> it's better it doesn't have sugar yeah i get it you gotta have a snack that's the whole point of hanging out with me is to have a snack and well, have a drink yeah yeah but yes i think this venus retrograde is going to be a doozy for a few reasons it's in the energy of gemini 
I love how you mentioned you have to speak it what you want. Um, I love that way of putting it. I think there are communication tools, mm -hmm. the need, the love for our communication tools, having tools that we love, especially considering how imperative they are now is going to be a part of this time. And these squares that Venus will be making to Neptune, yeah. um, you know, it's going to feel like a Mercury retrograde for a lot of people, I think. And it is, you know, with Venus retrograde, the question is always, do I love it or him or, or her or this situation or this opportunity or this circumstance? Mm -hmm. Do I love? And if there's love there, then the experiences we gain now help that love to grow stronger. But if there is not love here, at least we get honest with ourselves about it. And with all the squares to Neptune, it may not be so clear. Right. But at least, right. you know, we're going to realize something about where it is we are, where it comes to love for, yes, each other, for our neighbors. Mm -hmm. Gemini is the energy of neighbors. To, you know, actually showing up and giving love, loving thy neighbor as thyself, which is two parts of an equation. It means love others and love you as well. Right. Speaking from a place of love, processing information from a place of love. With Neptune, it's acknowledging our fear, our disappointment, our uncertainty in that. Acknowledging the mixed messages and the mixed feelings and the sadness around that so that we can heal and move forward. And it is an incredibly powerful time that can shift our lens. The, the lens with which we look at the world is what Gemini energy is about. And acknowledging where fear has colored those lenses and choosing to rise above as a form of self-care. Mm -hmm. Because it is Ceres that's going to be squaring that Venus as well. I think it's going to be a very powerful time. Oh, I do too. And especially because I was thinking about the, the perception of Gemini as well. And also that Pluto, typically the way he likes to work to help us get a different perception is to invert us. So I'm like, now you are inverted with new glasses and we need to talk about that. And mm -hmm. I think that's a wonderful place. And then again, in with all of that, um, Jupiter and Pluto will meet again. And now they'll both be retrograde. So it's really, truly this drive of honesty forward, right? Then we get the nodes that move in and they're like, you got to learn a new way to do this. So we got to speak in a new way. Let's detach from something that's not working. I mean, it's really a whole cosmic conspiracy to help the journey, even when it feels a little hard, when it feels a little bit frustrating. So I think that's the neat part is when you get to step back and look at it with people who do speak the language, you see the path is well lit and supported even if it feels to the human like it's dark and i don't quite know where yet you know i think that's the the beauty yet means you're eligible to by the way so it'll come the information will come yeah it will and, come uh, to you it's interesting because i don't know if you've ever had the experience but i have literally had the experience where I see somebody and they seem like, you know, eh, whatever. And then I start talking to them and they literally get better and better looking the more I talk to them because of what they're saying, because of their mind. Their mind is so beautiful mm -hmm. that it ends up feeling like a force of attraction, yeah. that much more. And I think the role of that with Venus and Gemini, the role that a beautiful mind plays in love in attraction, the role that friendship and equality play, because Gemini is the energy of twins. These are siblings. These are equals that are looking at each other, that are connected to each other, that mirror each other. How much a role that plays in love. And what I also really like with all this social distancing, there'll be a lot of love connections happening online. That's yes. Sure. Yeah. Yes, if they're not already married already, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I was watching something about this phenomenon right now where people who were in very new relationships where they weren't really sure about a person they were just getting to know, as soon as this lockdown happened, they moved in. Yes, I know. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you're going to learn today. Yeah, right? right? And they're like, oh, yeah. 
what's gonna, I, you know, and they're all like, oh, I, I, I can't wait till this is over so that this dude leaves or this girl, like, you know, I can finally tell this girl, or how do I feel about now having spent so much time with this person and seeing what I see, I can't exactly like kick them out right now, or right. I feel afraid that they're going to kick me out or whatever. It's a fascinating, fascinating time. <laughs> it is, but it is still that place of truth, right? Where we get yeah. real honest about, now, hold on. How did you get in my house in the first place? What did I do that you're Beautiful. in my house? Thank you for saying that. Yes, yes. Right. That Pluto retrograde. <laughs> this is where we get honest. With How did you end up moving in? Yeah. What in me attracted you here? Right? How did I attract this very powerful karmic connection that I hope will be temporary? What happened? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So... I was thinking about this too, and I think we should address it because people ask a lot, but at this time we've, we've got all of this changing and this honesty coming up. And one of the things I also think that the configuration we've got going at this time is beautiful for is people getting honest about the value of money and their relationship with it spiritually um, as well. Pluto is the great debt person, the great mm -hmm. debt energy. So even if it's not just the emotional traumas and dramas and things like that, that happen, financial things I think are huge. Uranus is in Taurus being shaken, not stirred, you know, so that's just a real shock over there anyways to other things of value and our money systems in general. So I think that this time is going to be profound for using all of the Gemini forces we get to get in there and get some new learning to move away from maybe what has caused debt or harm or misunderstanding about those kinds of things financially as well, or even just fear of. People don't have to have debt to be in fear of money. You maybe just don't know what to do with it or don't believe you can have it. So what do you think? I've, I've had a, a lot of that, but I'm a Taurus. Well, I'm thinking about how Venus has to do with, with money as well. And yes, like what we value showing up, uh, but it's a different energy when we think about values, right? There's different ways of understanding that. When we think about like the ethical values, the spiritual values, we're looking at Jupiter. But with Venus, it's about what we're actually doing, what's actually showing up mm -hmm. and what we value putting our energy towards. And so a lot of us are seeing more clearly uh, what it is that has value. And you know, the other thing I was thinking with Venus and Gemini, a spiritual mentor of mine who, who passed on uh, quite a few years ago, his name was Tom John. He was uh, so valuable to me. And I remember he used to say, money is just a construct. In Canada, we have a $2 coin. It's called a toonie. And he said, anything over a toonie is just a construct. It's just a, a thought. It's just a theory. And I was like, what do you mean? And he said, look, you take the material it takes to make a toonie and that's worth about two dollars yeah mm -hmm. but once you get beyond that right the inherent value of paper or numbers on your computer screen that is the value we give it it's a theory that we have established and so he was using the example of well you can buy a house but you can have debt and on paper it looks like you're a millionaire but really you're not and you know what are you actually holding in your hand and it was a fascinating way to understand um, how it is that we interact with um, value and money and how we understand the, the worth or the, the creation of money in our lives. And you think about how Gemini energy is about mind. It is about the construct. It is about the words and, and the thoughts and the ideas. It's not an energy that is necessarily embodied. It's not about the value that uh, inherently holds, something inherently holds. It's the value of ideas. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember uh, years ago when I was doing my undergrad, now we're going way back here, when I was doing my undergrad, right, the core classes as part of my degree was ideas that change the world. And so every year we had these core classes we had to take in order to get this specific degree. And... Um, it really is ideas that change everything. And ideas are something that is worth valuing. And at a time like this, you realize how much ideas actually matter. Uh, when we see ourselves living in times that are changing the world, what ideas are going to be there and what ideas are allowing the creation of the new and the next, mm -hmm. this time of transition that we're moving into, 
it is going to be very rooted in ideas. And so I think more of us are seeing the um, illusionary quality, yeah. but also how real that illusion is, right? Mm -hmm. I like to think that our, our physical environment is ultimately there to help us to understand deeper spiritual lessons. Like that's the point of the physical manifestation that we have created as a collective, but also in our own individual lives. And I think that that is a place of power to put oneself in. If we take that step and say, okay, how is what is manifesting here a part of me learning some spiritual truth, some spiritual lesson? How is it part of my journey towards what I like to call greater love and greater wisdom? Well, I do think that uh, disconnect between the physical and the spiritual not just the integration, but also the appreciation of the disconnect may show up more at this time of this Venus retrograde season in particular. And that doesn't mean that the realities of our lives don't uh, create real stress, right? It is right. a very common thing. A lot of people live with the stress of needing to meet their financial responsibilities. Yeah. It happens. It's a part of the existence for a lot of people. But I remember Eckhart Tolle, you know, he once said, you don't need to worry about your bills. You need to pay your bills, but you don't need to worry about it. And that really becomes about putting yourself in a different energetic space. Mm -hmm. And it is going to be very interesting to see how this Venus retrograde season is going to invite us to step into a different energetic space, but to feel the pull of the fear at the same time, yeah. knowing that it's a construct and it's a theory, and yet the fear of the Neptune square, wanting to know that we're going to be okay, having to shift our own value in the process, it's going to be enlightening, truly yeah. enlightening journey. But in the midst of it, it may not feel so enlightening. <laughs> Because <laughs> Neptune squares don't feel very enlightening in the process. No. After the fact, we make sense of them. Absolutely. Well, and then we'll have Mars energy that will come in. I mean, we've got a, we've got a, a season here over this next five months to just put a small bite on it. You know, where we will really, I think, also relook at the value of um, what we do and how it adds value into our communities, right? Because there is, there is, there's this idea that it's like, oh my gosh, that is just way too expensive. Why do people charge that? Or why does this cost this? Create something. But you know what? You yeah, but then you know what? That says more about the person judging the value of it. Exactly. Thing. But it's I not it's about the inherent value of whatever. It's about your own judgment, your own mm -hmm. relationship to money, your own relationship to prosperity is going to show up in how you judge the value of other things. It is not about the inherent value of the thing itself. Exactly. But that's where I think some of that awakening will happen for people too, because as they also come to creating something, sharing something, speaking something, value recognition changes right? It's just a nice natural shift that I think gets to happen for people. So I think truly it will be an interesting time to see what people begin to value personally. Globally, that'll be a whole nother story, but personally, it'll be interesting to see where people find, find the value and they'll find value in their information. I just feel like there are also going to be an abundance of teachers that show up in our world because they'll have the ideas and they'll be ready to share them. They've already got them. We're just waiting for them to peek their little eyeballs onto YouTube or something so we can find them. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Well, good. Nadia, thank you for coming over. Thank you for talking. We just, we just let it happen. Yeah, right. I love that. Well, let me say this um, before I let you go. You know, I have been making these correlations between this Saturn-Pluto conjunction that happened to start this year. And the last time we had this conjunction in the energy of Capricorn was the Protestant Reformation. And if you think about what was happening during that time, it was literally this idea that you don't need intermediaries to know the word of God, to have a relationship with God. And that shift was a leap in human consciousness. It was huge. It would have been unheard of before this point to think that you don't need 
someone to explain the word of God to you, right. to think that you as a regular human being could actually decide for yourself what the word of God means. And you think about how it is this very configuration that then reduces the power not only of uh, people within uh, established religious communities, but also royalty who were appointed by God, anointed mm -hmm. by God, simply by being born in the families they were born into. Mm -hmm. It is this particular configuration that changes that relationship so that the French Revolution can happen, so that the American Revolution can happen years and years later. And so we literally are in these very powerful times where we are leaping into a new consciousness as humanity. Now think about this as well. The last time that Jupiter and Saturn conjuncted in the sign of Aquarius, that was the printing press. That was mass printing in a way that we hadn't known before, in a way that just took over the world. That was the seed that began that information became much more widely available, which ultimately led to people being able to have access to the texts that they would need, the words that they would need to, to decide for themselves what things mean, what their spirituality is going to be. Everything flowed from this new information age that happened the last time Jupiter and Saturn conjuncted in the sign of Aquarius. So now here we are in this very rare year of 2020, and I truly believe it is this year that is launching us into a whole new phase of humanity. It is the very beginning, and it's really exciting times to live in. On the one hand, we have the leap of consciousness, the change in our understanding of what it means to have power and who has it, and our individual power, which is Saturn conjunct Pluto. And then we have the information age, uh, you know, on steroids, accelerating in a way that we've never known it before. It's like the way that we're going to understand the exchange of information and being interconnected. It's like it hasn't been invented yet. It is the seeds mm -hmm. of the very beginning that happens at the end of this year. So it's an exciting time to be alive. You know, the last time 600 years ago was the last time that Jupiter and Saturn conjuncted in Aquarius. It's going to happen twice this century. It's happening at the end of this year and then in 2080. Yeah. So we are in very powerful times and it is 2020 that is the turning point. So it's so exciting to be an astrologer, to be alive at this time, to be a part of it, to be witness to it and to help make sense of it, to help people to remember that it is during this time that we can choose to align with greater love and greater wisdom. I love being a part of that. I think it's so exciting and wonderful. Yeah, I do too. And I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, I bet this is how older astrologers felt too, where they were like, this is big, right? You know, they're just all together and they're like, wait, this is big. This is going to be big. And now we get to be this, a part of this other leap of people in this field, in this industry. And we're like, this is big, you know, like to me, I think there's something beautiful just in the ancestry of the industry, like people for as long as we can really document, have been talking about what's up there and what it means for us. And I love that we and, and the viewers get to be here and be a part of that, that lineage of the conversation, watching the stars do what they do. Uh, absolutely. I, it, we stand on very broad, very strong shoulders. We are here because of the astrologers that came before us. Their love, their sacrifices makes us mm -hmm. possible. And, uh, it's a beautiful thing to know that we have that connection, just like we have our physical ancestry. Yeah. Anytime you align with a school of thought, uh, a system of thought, uh, an industry, a practice, you become connected to that intellectual ancestry as well. So uh, absolutely, it's, it's a wonderful thing to be an astrologer today, but also to have the history and the legacy that we do. Yeah, makes it important to find a tribe. So Saturn Aquarius, go get your freaking tribe right now because you're going to need them. Yeah, and it's a process. Know that it's a journey. It's, it's a journey that we're going to be on for a while and, and you'll get there. Yeah, and you'll keep running into astrologers who are like, who are your friends? Do you have a tribe? You mean working on a tribe maybe? Yeah, but you being an astrologer, that alone makes you a part of this community. Yeah. Even people, you know, that we may never meet, that practice at their kitchen tables, that maybe don't come to events and things like that, maybe aren't as active online still, we are part of the same astral family. Yeah. 
they're the helpers. Well, Nadia, thank you so much for coming. I'm thank so you, Stormy. You. Thank you for having me here and sharing me with your audience and just sending you my absolute love and gratitude and to your audience as well. Thank you. Yeah, we'll see you guys next time. So like the video, comment, share, subscribe, check out Miss Nadia, and we'll see you in, in whatever comes up next. Bye, everyone.